So I'd like to tell you a little story that I enjoy sharing about our glands and frequencies. Someone else could tell a different story. I wouldn't argue with them. I'm just going to tell this story. It goes like this. I'm going to say that each one of our famous glands, because there are more glands than these in your body, but these famous ones here that I have listed on the board, each one is sort of tuned in relationship to a frequency. Now, the pineal gland, for instance, located inside the center of your brain, it's interesting because your brain actually produces magnetite. Who knew? Lots of animals actually produce magnetite. That's what gives birds their sense of direction. So we also produce magnetite accumulating in the pineal gland. We could say that the pineal gland is actually tuned by or is in relationship with the frequency of magnetism, which occurs at a very high octave in the electromagnetic spectrum. We're talking about very, very, very many squeals, squiggles of frequency per second. So think about that. Pineal gland tuned to magnetism. What about the pituitary? Let me write that down anyway. Magnetism. I still smell, spe, spe, smell and spell. <laughs> I came in third grade. Okay, the pituitary gland. Well, X marks the spot. What is this X? Here's your eyeballs. Eyeballs. And this is called the, these are the optic nerves. And the X marks the spot. We call it the optic chiasma, which basically means the optic X. Greek letter. Chi. Okay, so the pituitary gland actually lives, say we did the X this way in this plane, the pituitary gland actually lives in a little bony bucket in your sphenoid bone called the sella turcica, directly underneath the place where your optic nerves cross over. So I like to say that the pituitary gland is tuned to or by the visible light spectrum, which is sort of a set of frequencies, right, from, from our, what's the colors of the rainbow, right? That's the visible light spectrum divided up into colors. So I'm going to tell you or suggest that the pituitary gland is in relationship to that. And we know that to be true because the pituitary gland is running all kinds of cycles, right, in our body in relationship to the movements of the sun. Uh, uh, relative to the Earth, or Earth to Sun, depending upon whether you're Galileo or <laughs> the Inquisition. Okay, so the, the um, what about the thyroid? So there we go, visible light spectrum, visible light. What about the thyroid gland? The thyroid gland sits right over my larynx in the beginning of my trachea here. So as I speak to you, or as you speak to another, you're literally vibrating your thyroid gland with your voice. And as you breathe, right, the, the wind, the wind and the wave of your voice, those wind and waves are vibrating your thyroid gland right where it sits. So what have you got to say about that? If you, I really do believe, I had a friend many years ago, she was an opera singer who hadn't been singing and her metabolism had been sluggish. She was, had hypothyroidism. I was like, you gotta sing, right? Many of us need to sing, need to use our voice for the health of our thyroid gland. So thyroid gland is tuned to the frequencies of our voice. It knows you, and it knows what you sound like, your thyroid gland. What about the thymus? The thymus lives right here behind your sternum and over your heart. Many people, I think this is going to mess with my microphone, many people go, they thump their thymus, right, for thymus health. Why would you do that? It's actually reiterating what's happening inside your body from the inside out. Your heart is thumping your thymus all day long, percussing it, literally bunk, bunk, 
bunk, bunk, rubbing up against it. Your thymus is listening to your heart. It's feeling your heart. It can hear your heart, all right? There's sonic emanations from the heart. It actually makes a sound and you can listen to it with a stethoscope. And there's electromagnetic emanations from the heart, which are truly a signature of you. So it's interesting to me that the thymus gland is where our T cells are trained, part of our immune system. It's where the goats learn to know who the shepherd is before they go out and eat everything in the field that's not the shepherd. Goats don't eat the shepherd. So the, the T cells of your immune system are trained in your thymus. They're listening to your heart. How do we know who this person is so we can get rid of foreign invaders? We have to, we have to, to know one another. So the, the thymus is tuned to the, to the heart frequencies. Heart frequencies which come in, in both sonic, percussive, and electromagnetic forms. What about the adrenal glands? Well, your adrenal glands are right above your kidneys, adrenal, right, atop the kidneys. They don't actually sit on the kidneys, they sit on the fat around the kidneys. That's another video. But the adrenal glands are tuned, I would say, to the emotional milieu of your environment. We literally, I would say, are in resonance with our environment, which the waves of which are coming towards our body. Say someone's shouting at you. You don't just hear it, which is resonating your eardrum. You feel it. It's resonating your superficial fascia, right? And then it's conveyed like an echo all the way down to your adrenal glands, like shells of fat, which are co-resonant with the external environment. And your adrenal glands pick up on that, on your kidney fat, and they transduce the information into into nerve impulses and, and on hormonal uh, expression that say, run, hide, freeze, something. So our adrenals are very much in, 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 in tune with our relationship with the emotional environment around us. So I'm going to write emotional, emotional milieu. Oh my gosh, milieu. I have no clue. Is there an X in there? I really don't know, folks. Emotional milieu, adrenals. What about the pancreas? Okay, this is a neat one. Your pancreas is, is lying very close to your adrenals, actually. I didn't know which one to put first. They're so close to each other. But the pancreas is in tune with what you put in your mouth. Your thyroid is in tune with the sounds coming out of your mouth. The pancreas is in tune with the food and drink that you're putting into your mouth. So it has to respond to what you eat. And what you eat can support or mess with your pancreas because they're in a dynamic, constant, all day long, all lifelong relationship. So be kind to your pancreas when you think about what you're putting in your mouth and when even. So pancreas is tuned to the vibrations of our food. Now, what about the gonads? Okay, here's where it gets a little hokey. Uh, <laughs> because whether your gonads are sitting inside your pelvis or hanging outside your pelvis, either way, <laughs> they love to move. Okay, so the, when you walk, right, your pelvis is going whoosh, 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 and your gonads are so happy. Okay, and, and your, well, your balls might be flopping along. Okay, they bounce from side to thigh, from thigh to thigh, and that's the life of gonads, and they like it. And when they really are having a good time, they are moving like banshees. Okay, so the gonads, I'm going to say, are tuned to movement. They also notice when you're not moving. I spent many years walking around like I had a two by four in my pants, uh, being a very good, good pious man that, that had no pelvis, okay? So I moved around very stiffly, and my gonads weren't that happy. So they're much happier now uh, that I, I let them move. Okay, so gonads are tuned to movement. Now, these are all different octaves, right, of vibration, but I'm just telling a story, as I said, and I think about these things, and maybe you'll think about them with me too. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to study more with me, 
Go to gilheadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.